everybody, it's Michael with Bay Area Hiking Guides. I'm up here with Beth once again. She's out here with me on Lime Ridge. It's a little smoky out here and definitely hot. We're dealing with a lot of those extreme temperatures. But today we're not going to be talking about the heat of the smoke. We're actually going to be talking about those plant apps. A lot of these uh, apps you see out there, a lot of people talking about them on Nextdoor. And I see them a lot uh, through people on hikes and stuff that a lot of people are using them. And there's a bunch of them out there. So we're going to get more into detail about them. Is, is it something that actually does work? Is it something that you should be using on a regular basis? So stay tuned. All right, guys. So welcome back. If you're new to the channel, always feel free to leave a like, uh, comment down below, get a whole co collaboration of comments going. That's always a good thing. And... Um, support the channel by subscribing. So let's go ahead and talk about this, about those plant ID apps that they have here in um, available. And actually I downloaded two on my phone, one which was, um, one which cost uh, money yearly. Actually somebody was mentioning it on Nextdoor. And that one's called Picture This and it cost uh, $19.99 uh, for a year, but I did the, uh, just a trial basis and then I'll just end my subscription. So that was called Picture This and then the other one is called Leaf Snaps. So me and Beth went around here and took a bunch of pictures and uh, see what it uh, did for us. So Beth, why don't um, you tell everybody kind of what, you, what you're all about as far as plant ID and your knowledge of plants. I work in a nursery and I've been working with plants for about 37 years um, and I'm also an avid uh, naturalist, you know, I don't know what something is, I'll usually go and try to look it up in a book um, through that. So it's interesting to use these apps. Um, the one that costs money, the uh, picture this, seems to be a lot more accurate than the other one, the leaf snap. It's okay. Leaf, leaf snap <laughs> was saying that, took a picture of poison oak, and it was telling us it could be a beech tree. For instance, that's not good because a poison oak is something that you kind of need to know what it is. We know plant ID. We're not, I wouldn't say we're botanists or experts or anything of that nature, but best is this at a nursery all the time. So you're, you're pretty well, uh, well educated in plant ID and I'm pretty well educated with oaks um, to, to a degree. And so one of the biggest difficulties that I see with it is when people look at the, the plants and they, they take a picture, they don't know if it's going to be right or wrong in some cases. Or we know, we know if it's going to be way off or if it's going to be right. Like the, the leaf snap was way off in a lot of cases where it would have 10 different options and they were all wrong. Rum cherry, a Greek strawberry tree, Australian cheese wood, lemon, European white birch, what? candleberry, Silex again, honeydew oak, uh, could possibly be an apricot, a Chinese gooseberry, okay, a golden key fruit, kiwi fruit, <laughs> a golden kiwi fruit, a red buckeye, a gold, a California buckeye, so the bottom one is California buckeye, but it's getting an almond, a uh, black walnut, a dead rat tree. See if we can get the oak right. Perenin oak. Quercus cyrus. Turkey oak. Downy oak. <laughs> what? Penelotokit oak. Or a gary oak. It could be a bur oak. Stave oak. Oh god. Gamble oak. Hagarian oak. Wayleaf million. A tobar oak. <laughs> what the? The one that's been making a lot of the boo-boos is Leaf Snap. Then I have to deal with these ads. Oh, Poison Ivy. <laughs> Cherry Plum or Beech Tree. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, a million downloads. People are using it pretty regularly. It's one of the top rated. And it can't figure out something that's... Poison oak. Poison elk, that's stuff that people need to kind of know about right. and know how to identify. So that's a big problem. I'm pretty much to the point where I'm not using Leaf Snap anymore. We're done with that. And some are just way out of the family. So I think that it's a good idea to, to use um, 
for example. The picture of this was really good. What do you got for me? California Buckeye. All right. There we are. The little story behind it. Common hop tree. Ah. That is good. That's not that common. No. Boyan. Boom. Number one choice. Okay, so picture this. Did get it correctly. It said it's a valley oak. And it's saying it's sweet fennel or fennels. Also known as wild fennel, Flor Florence fennel, fresh fennel. Pretty basic, okay. but yeah. that's correct. Okay. Pacific poison oak. All right. Yeah, I like the fact that it gives you a bunch of general facts. Some uh, not as accurate, but... Close to live oak. All righty. Good show. So the one that costs money got it right again. He just kind of kind of brushed through. So it doesn't get you really educated. And going in, and me and Beth went through a boot camp, okay? If, if we were to have come up with some of the stuff that Leaf Snap came up during classes, <laughs> uh, I would be leashed up like a dog in the back there. Uh, wouldn't go well. So um, we were, you know, it was like boot camp and we were panned with all this information. So we took the actual leaf samples, not to say that you should pick, pick on flowers, but we took leaf samples and and went home and really, really dissected the whole thing in a way um, and really learned this stuff. And that's the real way you can learn is taking this stuff home, looking at books and really get a better understanding for what you're looking at. And that's going to help you know this stuff a lot better than taking a picture, looking at it and go, oh, okay, cool, some extra interesting facts. And then you're scrolling like you do on Facebook and then on to the next thing. Um, a lot of these apps are, you know, they cost, some of them cost money. And then I noticed with the leaf snap, um, I was getting an ad that was coming up every single time. Mm -hmm. So I had to listen to that on my hike, which is not really enjoyable. Nonetheless, to be looking on my phone is not really enjoyable too. So it kind of takes the attention away from being outdoors and being on a hike. Um, so I recommend the picture of this as being a probably the best one out of the two that we checked out. It does cost money. Um, you can pay as you go if you like. I don't know if there's ads or commercials if you're if you're not paying or you're not doing the, the uh, trial, but um, that seemed to be pretty accurate. But once again, it was still, there was a few times where it was kind of doing some hiccups. So I wouldn't say that it's 99.9% .9 um, accurate. A basic way, in a, in a way, Beth, I mean, if someone was to take a picture of this, they can definitely kind of somewhere to start off. Right. At least it puts you in the general ballpark of what it is. They might put you in the right family or the right um, genus, and then you can kind of go fine-tune it from there. It'll at least point you in the right direction. The other one was, the, 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 the free one was way off in a lot of in, in common things too, like a buckeye, poison oak, um, a live oak, you didn't know what it was. Those are very, a toy on, very common plants. Yeah, um, and it, it kept getting the stuff so wrong that I just, I was done with it. Yeah. It was it's left and right, but the uh, picture of this was doing good. And the other cool thing with the the picture of this was taking pictures of stuff and then showing you cautions and stuff that you need to be worried about, mm -hmm. like the nightshade that we have here on Lime Ridge. Um, I would not be using this to uh, take it as for an edible. I would definitely not use these apps. And edibles is a very serious thing. You need to know exactly 100% uh, as a disclaimer there what it is that you're about to eat because it can make a mistake it can be off you don't want to fully rely on electronics the same goes for gps but that's another story you don't want to fully rely on electronics because they they can make mistakes often and us as as uh, plant enthusiasts mm -hmm. we can figure this thing you know we kind of know uh what's right and wrong we're, we know what we're taking a picture of so um yeah so you would you recommend the uh, picture of this beth yeah i would yeah I would. It at least puts you in the right direction and it'll give you the name and then you can go home and look it, look it up in a book or you want to. Um, but I wouldn't just rely on just that. I would recommend you doing further studying and further looking in a book, um, looking at different, maybe puts you in the right category, but then you can look at the different species. You know, um, let's say tar weeds out here. We've got hundreds of, you know, many different tar weeds. Um, in the state, so it'll at least put you in it'll put you in the right direction. So that's a start. But you still, it's still nice to do do the book work though, instead of just relying on electronics. Um, people, I think these days they want a quick and easy route. 
They don't want to. They don't want to study. They don't want to do the footwork or the book work. They just want to tell me what it is so I could just go on and you know do the next thing. They don't want to go home and study it. Picking up books and checking stuff out, and identifying it, and getting out there, getting your your hands dirty, and 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 taking it back home, taking a sample back home or two. Not picking every flower in the in the area, but yeah, it's really fun. It's a fun thing to do. It's a fun thing to do with your kids and getting out there. It's like where's Waldo in a way. Um, and that, you know, when you've got it in your phone and you're looking at your phone, it kind of takes away from all the fun, especially when you have ads popping up every, every few seconds. So, um, really cool in-depth stuff out there that you can learn about that really makes you get more intrigued and then you become a crazy person like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, like you were saying, I would not use it for identifying edibles um like mushrooms picking mushrooms yeah, a big no -no. um that that would be a big no-no one of the um pictures we took of a bark of a tree it, cho it, sh it showed us lichen it said it was a lichen it said it could be a fungus don't 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 eat what did it say don't eat this yeah don't it, eat this it, it identified it as a lichen on the bark and it said don't eat this so that's that's good but in it, like the Datura, it was the nightshade, it was telling us, you know, it, it could be toxic. The picture of this was good, but the leaf snap was identifying way the off. California buckeye and saying it was kiwi. Yeah, so yeah, way I'm off, done. Way off. <laughs> Not even the right continent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way off. <laughs> All right, guys, well, thank you so much for checking us out. And, uh, you know, go to it's great that you're studying one of studying plants and you want to get out there and learn more about them. And I did definitely recommend that. Uh, getting some books out there and, and you know I, I i would probably recommend one of my favorite books anything that glenn keeter puts out is pretty awesome uh do you have any other books uh, to recommend people that they can uh, start buying and uh, learn more about plants um one that's real simple is um there's um the wildflowers of mount diablo it's it's put out by the uh, mount diablo interpretive association it's it's real it's just a little booklet it's real simple it's color coded um you can buy it up at the visitor center up at Mount Diablo. It costs like five or six dollars or something. Or you could even buy it on their website. Um, it, it just gets you started. You know, it's just real. It's real simple and very common. Common things that bloom in the in the summer or in the spring. Um, like I said, it's color coded. Um, also, East Bay Regional Parks and Mount Diablo both online have wildflower guides that are color coded. So even um, East Bay Regional Parks has it by park. You can go to say Los Trompas and it'll tell you what wildflowers grow there. You know, and it lists them by color, yellow, white, blue. So that's that's a really good good way to look at things too. Yeah. All right, and then you notice you, you say color coordinated. So that's a really cool way to help kind of break things down as you're Yeah, identifying. especially if you're a beginner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for checking out the channel. We've we've, we've just coming I and mean, uh, if you're new to the channel, hey, come on, come on in here and check out some of these cool videos. All right, guys. Well, have a good one. Take care. All right. What plant am I gonna eat today? Oh, what do you know? It's a kiwi. Ah, huh. that kind of looks like a buckeye. Not. Just remember, folks. Those are buckeyes, not kiwis. Gosh. Leaf snap. You know, if you're still watching this video of me looking through my refrigerator, you're a diehard fan. All right, guys, have a good one. Take care. I'm going to get something to eat here.